In this lesson, we'll see that things get more complicated in systems with more than one electron. We'll learn how to order the orbitals in increasing energy, which will be used in section 6.8 and 6.9 to place electrons and build up the periodic table. We'll learn something called the Aufbau diagram to easily know which orbitals are filled in which order. Last lesson, I showed this diagram which arranges the orbitals based on their principal quantum number n, also known as their energy level. Unfortunately, this diagram is only true for systems with one electron, such as a neutral hydrogen atom. As soon as we add a second electron, the electrons are interacting with each other and it shifts the energies of these orbitals around. So forget that old energy level diagram to the left. This is the true energy level diagram of the elements. Notice that S is lower than P, and P is lower in energy than D, and D is lower in energy than F, although I ran out of room and couldn't show any F. The hardest thing for me to remember is that the 4S orbitals are lower in energy than the 3D orbitals, but I have a great way of remembering this order. To the right is an expanded energy level diagram showing the orbitals for the first 19 subshells. These contain a total of 51 orbitals, which can hold a total of 102 electrons. Next section, we'll fill up the orbitals with electrons starting at the lowest energy level. On an exam, you will need to be able to replicate this order of orbital energies, which is also shown in green at the top of the page. But don't bother memorizing it. Instead, draw an Aufbau diagram. Please grab a piece of paper and pencil and follow along. First, write out all of the subshells you are interested in, organized by their energy levels. So in the top row is the 1s subshell. In the second row, we have the 2s and the 2p subshells. Make sure to write the 2s directly below the 1s. In the third energy level, we have a 3s, a 3p, and a 3d subshell. Make sure that the 3s and the 3p are directly underneath the 2s and the 2p. Continue in this pattern through the 7f subshell. Then draw a diagonal line from the upper right to the lower left, which crosses over the 1s subshell. The 1s subshell is the first subshell to be filled. Next, draw a parallel diagonal line through the 2s subshell. The 2s subshell is the second subshell to be filled. Next, draw another parallel line through the 2p and the 3s subshells. The 2p is filled before the 3s. Continuing this pattern, we see that we fill the 3p, then the 3s, then the 3d, then the 4p, then the 5s, then the 4d, the 5p, the 6s, the 4f, the 5d, the 6p, the 7s, the 5f, the 6d, and finally the 7p. We'll stop here since this is enough subshells for all the known elements on the table. We'll see in the next two sections how this filling order gives the periodic table its unique shape. Lastly, before we start placing electrons in orbitals, remember that each orbital can fit two electrons. But the Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. So each of the two electrons in an orbital has an opposite spin, which is signified by the final quantum number m sub s, the spin quantum number. Electron spin is what causes some materials to be affected by magnets.